Danganronpa is a series known for its thrilling and unexpected twists and turns, and its characters are no exception. In this top 10 list, in my own opinion, we will be exploring some of the most impactful moments, featuring some of the most memorable characters in the franchise. Starting off our list, we have going to Gokuhara's death and just overall demeanor in V3 was worth mentioning. A lot of people describe him as kind of a lovable, dumb animal bug lover. Basically, in Killing Harmony, he proves himself to be a selfless and heroic character, constantly taking a stand to be a gentleman. When he's actually killed overall, it's horrible because, number one, he wasn't even aware of what he was doing. Personality was kind of warped world where he ended up killing Mew. His selfless kindness and really just left a big impact overall as that big off character in general. Gonta's death was very meaningful and impactful on the group as a whole. Everybody wanted to defend Gonta and it was very hard for anybody to say goodbye to Gonta in that moment. Also just kind of the twist of Kokichi kind of setting off and also hurting him was terrible there. Sayaka, Maizono's Betrayal and Death. We open up on the first chapter of Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc, or in the actual anime, where the protagonist, Makoto Nayagi, and the other students are all trapped in the killing game. Sayaka, Maizono, one of the students, is initially presented as a kind and supportive character to Makoto, basically being kind of like our sidekick, if you will. However, in a shocking twist, she betrays Makoto, attempts to kill in order to escape the game by herself, setting him up for the fall. Only in the last moments of her life to get revenge on her killer, Leon, but also to, you know, help Makoto. But this betrayal starts off the game in general and basically starts this whole process of everybody getting killed and dying and Hirumi Tojo's execution and overall death in the same game. Hirumi Tojo's execution and overall betrayal is also one of the most brutal and impactful scenes in the entire franchise. Very gory, full of blood. As she desperately tries to escape her fate in her, well, ultimate death, Rumi is ultimately made an example of by essentially giving a rope or a way out. She starts climbing the rope in front of everybody and as she gets to the top, realizes there is no escape. Is brutally dropped for his death after being tortured and horribly mangled up. Hirumi took on the role of caretaker for the group overall, you know, kind and friendly, and everybody was even referring to her as like a mom. How much he loved and supported the group in general, becoming a killer and dying in the group, it was very much what a hit to the group overall. Kaido Momoda's kind of murder, but also in that regard, betrayal where he kills Kokichi, very big twist. But also the idea that Kaido Momoda kind of fights back up until that point. Kaido had always taken a point maker of like speeches and talking smack and trying to fight back even though he couldn't fight and he was weak. His sickness though, killing him slowly. So he joined Kokichi's plan in order to stop Maki from being a killer also and to protect the people he cares about. It went so far as that Shuichi even lied it into the trial just to trip up Monokuma for more information and or the mastermind in the game itself. Definitely Kaido had a big impact at the very end of the game because of how Shuichi responded with everything can't be fake and all this other stuff. And everything, something has to be real here, right? The dynamic of working out together and just being bros and sidekick and superheroes and all that. Sakura Ogami's sacrifice. In the first game of the series, Sakura Ogami's sacrifice, basically in response to being labeled a traitor and sowing division in the group again after everyone was finally uniting. The idea is that after trying to meet with so many people, she kind of gave up on life and died and killed herself and it was horrible and even left a letter for everybody in general. The premise is that Sakura united the group at the very end with the small cast, with Sakura's fighting spirit, the way that Sakura even dies, just kind of resting peacefully, impacted Hina, the whole group as a whole even Yakia and Toko and everybody, they all had the sense of feeling of sadness. They have to fight to grant Sakura's wish and end this thing. Chisa Yokizome's Betrayal. This character is from the anime as a whole, so if you haven't seen the anime, basically, this is the teacher Danganronpa 2 cast, and basically a very highly thought after teacher in the school before the tragedy, and after she had a key role in the Future Foundation. But Chisa, just like the class had actually been brainwashed along with everybody else, basically was, along with a couple other people, corrupted with despair inside of the actual organization, basically spies on the inside. But at the end of the day, Chisa went so far as the very beginning of the anime to straight up die on a chandelier killing herself, is function in the Future Foundation or the leaders would actually kill each other of all the divisions. Makoto Nayagi and the original Danganronpa characters caught in the middle and became our narrator of sorts throughout the series. But it was a very big twist to just kind of end it and with our teacher and or somebody we wouldn't expect to die like that dying so tragically, setting up many different twists and turns throughout the series. <laughs> 
Paede Akamatsu's Sacrifice. In a twist that shocked many people, including myself when the game first came out, our protagonist, Kaede Akamatsu, is revealed to be not our protagonist. Basically, she's part of the first murder of the game. We committed the murder, already a big twist. However, rather than running from the mistake overall, Kaede kind of accepts her punishment and even like could have escaped by the first blood perk, allowed her to live. You know, as the leader and with her strong overall feelings, she just couldn't bring herself to do that. But it was a very touching and deep moment with Shuichi and many members of the cast. We basically watched Kaede bad at moments, distraught at moments, frustrated at moments, stressed out at moments. We bonded very heavily with her in the beginning introduction. Chiaki Nanami's death. We all hate it, but Chiaki has died twice in the anime adaptation of the Danganronpa anime overall in the past. Uh, Chiaki has become basically the class president, was the leader of the group, helped to develop many of the characters, you know, really cared about every member of the ultimate class, including Hajime for the initial manipulation and basically corrupting of Mikan. When Chiaki gets captured, everybody's forced to watch in the class, watch Chiaki's death, their friend and, you know, class representative basically be murdered horribly in this torturous game with a ball running out of them, spikes with blow darts only to have her be crushed and murdered right in front of their eyes. It was so bad, the idea was the programming was so bad of her death that it basically caused everybody in the class to go insane and resulted in the series of millions and billions of people dying. So traumatizing, they just pushed everybody into despair. And in general, when she dies in the arms of Hajime, now he's zero when he has the clip. And the sense of that clip kind of helped him to take a stand against Junko eventually, the AI, but also to go back and put everybody in the system and repair the memories and actually give everybody a chance to fight back. Everybody has a very high influence from Yaki in the animation in general, and it's very well seen. この状況になっても Here is the Chiaki death of the game until chapter 5. One of our best key players in the trials itself, not very, you know, known who killed Nagito, but in reality, Nagito had actually set him up with luck, Chiaki, the traitor, to be the only person to live and survive. The death is still brutal and horrible with, you know, Tetris, who both had such a huge role. Chiaki and Hajime had this deep bond. Overall, the idea would be that they had this deep connection between the two of them that you could see on screen and off screen. Even afterwards, it was so strong that she could come back when it, she shouldn't have been able to. And in the very end was part of the reason why Hajime was able to come back, fight back against Junko and defeat her in the end. Absolutely a huge impact on the remaining cast. Heartbreaking when she died like that. not to be left out is Junko Inoshima. It's always Junko, all the little jokes write themselves. Junko obviously had a lot of influence and power over the group as a whole, but when Junko died, millions of more lives were saved in the world as a whole when, from the first game. We're going into the second game, third game, I mean, let's look at Toa City, right? When we look at Toa City, what do we see? Junko Inoshima influenced these kids, kill thousands of people in the city, basically destroy this fashion of humanity. It's still hanging on after the despair tragedy. When, and you're seeing it around the world, how 
Junko basically influenced the Despairs and how after her death they became more erratic and started going crazier and going more, doing more terrorist acts to the point where they even got captured. Even with it was within Zura's influence overall, right? They're being much more frantic. The Despairs were being hunted worldwide. But with Junko's death, many events around the series in the background were kind of set in, into the fold. But along with the death, it sets up the AI Junko, the future Junkos that would fall after from this bear influence or this crazy um, cult of personality that Junko brought along with her, right? And so in that regard, Junko and Mishima absolutely would make my top 10. But what do you think? Tell me what your thoughts are below. Are there any other deaths that I don't have on this list that you would definitely include as very impactful that set up huge twists in the stories or were very impactful for the series as a whole? Throw it down though. And then to the left right here, you should be able to, if you see where I'm pointing right here, that will be a video of, well, the Danganronpa Spinner series. So I recommend checking it out. One, two. Uh, we haven't done V3 yet, but we're going to do V3. And I'm excited for that. And then if you liked the video and you got to this point, consider liking helps me in the algorithm to kind of just stand out and overall to spread this thing that I'm passionate about and I enjoy and love so much. And thank you very much for your time and watching today. Bye-bye.